Greetings, viewers, and thanks for tuning in today. If you watched my last video, you saw that I blew my AirB air locker seal in the differential out. Uh, from a couple of videos ago when I flopped over in Missouri and I thought that my rear axle seal was leaking, well, I got this drum off. It's a bunch of yuck in there. It's leaking all right. That is soaked, no break, but wish it was the wheel cylinder because that's a lot easier to fix, but it's not, so axle seals. ARB I know is leaking inside because I can hear it blowing out the vent tube. Uh, that's why I didn't go through and like soap my lines and hope that I found it because I know it was plainly obvious I left it on all night. It had no other choice but to hold its breath indefinitely or leak. So um, those little rubber band seals that go in on the end, I hope that's all it was. I've got a spare set of those. Anyway, going to dig deeper into that. Got this drum off. Ugh, found a bunch of yuck. On the plus side... My alignment cam update survived the last wheeling trip without a flinch. So everything on that's doing really well. You notice I did just weld those skid plates right back on. I got bigger fish to fry because I didn't have my rear traction device the last time. So I need to do the axle seals now, it appears. I need to fix that big dent back there that you can't see because I don't have a light over here. Get ready to take this drum off because it looks like it's wet too. I did want to show you the little thing with using the bolts to take your drum off because if your drum is stuck, there's these little bolt um, threaded spots on the side here. Crank some 12 millimeters in there. I don't know what the thread count is on them necessarily. Grab your hammer, which I left on the other side. Give it a smack or two. As you're uh, hitting them, you'll notice they'll free up and spin some more when they start to get tight. Do that again, because uh, we don't pull all the way around. That sounded loud and obnoxious, but it will help you to get those off. If you're out on a trail and you don't have a spare bolt like that and nobody's got one in their tool bag, a hood bolt will fit right there. So let me beat on that again for a minute, but you get the gist of it. Okay, after much fussing and banging and using some longer bolts, that's all it takes to get those to come off. You run those bolts in, but trust me, hood bolts will work in a pinch if you don't have anything else, same thread. So if you need to know what thread it is, same thread as a hood bolt. Anyway, I'm gonna pull this one off see what is going on in here that's one nice thing about having a spare truck sitting over there that happens to have a rear end that's not leaking on the seals and isn't mashed in the middle and you can tell in there this one's been leaking some not a lot but just a little but i'm betting you also with that arb leaking and it pressurizing the differential housing probably help push out what's in there. I've got a non-damaged housing just sitting right over there in another truck. I'm going to have to do some thinking. Don't want to spend all the money putting seals in. Either way, I'm going to have to pull that ARB out and fix it. So stay tuned for more and learn about ARBs. I'm going to take a pause to ponder here and I'll be back. All right, so I'm getting ready to pull the axles out, and I think I'm going to just fix the rear end that's in there because I don't want to mess with pulling that one out and jacking with it. Going to have to undo my brake lines at the wheels because you have to take the axles out. Wheel cylinders come with them. Now, I made these two little um, oh, I, things to stop my brake fluid from just all draining out. They're parts of a compression fitting, but I just put a little piece of rubber in the end of them. You can also take one and put a brake line in the other end and mash it flat and solder it and crank it down and then just crank this on to your uh, brake line. But after you take them off, if you don't seal them up, they make things you can buy that plug them off, but I'm cheap and I don't buy stuff. I can make it myself. 
So that's what I do to keep my brake lines from leaking. I can't get a focus on that, but you get the idea, so do that. Okay, now under here, I first took the drive shaft off. I just hang it from that uh, muffler hanger bracket up there uh, using the chain at this particular time, just so it's up out of the way because I'm lazy and I don't want to take it off from the other end. So I just strap it up there so it's out of the way. Now this ARB line here that I've got has the push fit connector which is nice i don't know if you can see that but i'm taking like a hook tool lay it on the side push in towards the fitting and then pull your line out um, i wiped all the dust and stuff off of it first before i pulled it out because it needs to be clean but that's how you get that line out on your push fittings you push the ring around the outside in pull your line out and uh Take that apart, and I'm going to take my brake lines off and I'll show you how I use those little pieces that I told you you need to make for that while you got your hook. Don't forget to clean out around here so you can get your drain plug out. And you can get all your bolts out here in a minute because I still haven't cleaned my dirty truck. I'm just working on it dirty. So hang on, uh, move along here, and I'll get this uh, locker out. We'll see what's wrong with it. Okay, when it comes to breaking the lines loose, I don't really like line wrenches, so I don't use them generally. I'll just use a regular opened-in wrench. It seems to work most of the time. And you break your line loose to see that line is moving. You want to make sure as you spin that the line breaks loose from the fitting on the end so the fitting spins and not the line. Otherwise, you're going to twist your line. I haven't been that long since I've been in here, so I didn't spray them. But uh, you can spray them with some penetrating oil or something. That'll help. Hang on, let me get this line off, and I'll show you how to use those little things that I was telling you how to make just a minute ago. Okay, so when I was showing you the ones that I had pre-made, I accidentally was showing you these that I had pre-made for a mini truck, which is a smaller brake line. I have ones for this truck too. I just had to make them out of larger fittings. Same thing, rubber uh, insert inside it. I'll show you the one for the other side before I put it on. But I had to run in a hurry and get it because I forgot it because I'm a doofus. But anyway, you just bolt that on, hold a wrench on your little brass piece, bolt your line into it, and you can see no leakies. And so that way you don't lose um, all your brake fluid. So I'm going to take these bolts out back here and uh, get this axle seal out, get that ARB out, take a look at it, see what's wrong. Yeah, see here it is, same, same basic thing, brass piece with uh, rubber in the end. This just takes a bigger one for these brakes. I don't know why I can't get that to focus, holding it crooked, I guess. But anyway, same basic concept, bigger fitting. Just put a piece of rubber in the end of it, um, whatever you got from a bushing or a piece of rubber from rubber roofing. That's what I use. But anyway, let me go do that other side real quick, get these axles out. Okay, so once you get your brake line secured with your little pluggy in, haven't got the third member undone yet, but I got the four bolts out the end of the axle. There's a little tone ring there for your ABS. Uh, the offending axle seal is inside the axle. Well, let me, let me get this out of the way first, and then uh, I can show you where the offending seal is. But this just can be set down for the moment. It's not hurting anything. There's a seal right in there. And that's the seal that gets to leaking. So I will pop that out and put two new seals in. They seal up against this surface right here where I got my finger on this ring. And that's where it seals. You kind of see the shiny part. But anywho, that's where it seals up. And that's supposed to keep the fluid out. You can tell by all the fluid on this tone ring right here that it was leaking because that should be dry and it's wet 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 so anyway that's my problem with my seal leaking not a big deal if sometimes i think about all the crap to tear apart and i, I don't want to do it but gotta do it so 
Ganadet. And uh, that's that side. Go take the other side apart. I'll pull that third member, and then I think I'll just call this a how to disassemble your rear end. And then I'll do the uh, ARB on another video. So hang on, let me get that other axle out. We'll get that third member out, and then I'll conclude this session, I believe. With this side apart, also, you can tell all that grease that's down in there that's not supposed to be down in there. And all the grease on that tone ring that's not supposed to be on that tone ring tells you that those seals are leaking. I do imagine that pressurizing the differential uh, had some help in that. You can even see in that one, see that spring that's coming out of the seal there. This spring that was just laying in there and that's bad because that's part of the seal so anyway new seals going in here let me grab a 12 and whip that third member out real quick okay now from down here bring a pick and a magnet with you because getting those little washers off can sometimes be a pain and getting these Little nuts back out of your socket can sometimes be a pain and a magnet and a pick can make that suck a little bit less sometimes when you can reach in there and get those so the less suck the better I think and I'm gonna go around and zip all these out I got one up there where my ARB fitting is I got to get with a wrench right up here at the top but I'm just going to buzz them out real quick and get right back to you on pulling that dude out. Now, keep in mind, viewers, as I remove these last couple of um, lock washers here, that all of this part here, the drive shaft removal, the pulling all these 12s, the pulling of this and the seal, that's all my fault for being an idiot. So if all you had to do was axle seals... You'd have it as far apart as you need it right now. I'll get new axle seals, and when I put the ARB back in, I'll uh, show how to do the axle seals, too. It's real simple with the driver, but because I don't have them right now, and I want to end this up. So I'm going to go get my jack. I'm going to put it under the nose here and apply some pressure. Now it's going to break the seal I put on there, and then I'm going to pull that sucker out, and we'll take a look at it on the bench. Yeah, so you need to take something good away from watching my videos. If nothing else, learn from my dumb mistakes. And how many times I've put things together and had to take them back apart. And uh, stuff like this right here, where just because I forgot to flip that silly switch off, I'm under here pulling my third member out. And I need a better jack, because this one's old as the hills. But anyway, now that I've made contact with it, it doesn't take much there just letting the handle drop actually broke the seal on that so I'll bring her back down get this jack out of the way oh, get out the way jack get out the way now if you've watched me pull one of these before you know sometimes you kind of got to fiddle with them you got to spin the gear sometimes as you're trying to get it out of there so I'm going to try not to knock the camera over they are heavy so keep that in mind <clears throat> got the seal all broke all the way around now this one's given up pretty easy gotta be careful because I do have that copper line in there and just bring it out on your chest uh, and roll it over onto the ground which you can't see but that's what I did with it and now it's out while it's out oh, you see them dents in my case I'm gonna try and remember uh, to knock those out of there let me get out from under here pick that thing up we'll take it to the bench see what I got well okay then it's over on the workbench already now I hope you can see what I'm looking at here Inside this little ring here, there's two little round, um, of course they're round. <laughs> there's two little seals in there that I call rubber band seals. They kind of look like rubber bands. That's where your air comes in, goes through your little brass tube. Sorry, I kind of out of breath, picked this thing up and carried it. 
nice to see I didn't injure my copper tube in any way. Uh, this is how I chose to route mine. Some people bring them over, run them down along the side, or uh, fish them in a little bit of a different fashion. This is how I fish mine in. It's working just fine, has been just fine. It's nice to see it would appear. Maybe I got a little bit too high on my gear set, but it's uh, it's working fine. No problem. I'm going to pull this little snap ring off, remove this, and see if I can see anything wrong. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be obvious. This little ring just clips on uh, around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. And <laughs> should just remove easily. There it is. I got it. Had it under the hook. You see the hooks on it. Um, these little hook things, they fit in first and pull back into this groove in the back. Okay. I had to pay enough attention when I put it together to realize what I was doing when I was taking it apart. But anyway, go on. That's how that comes off. Now this, since it's still hooked in there, I want to be real easy taking it off of there. But I'd like to see if I can see any damage to it. So I'm going to slide it out of there and see what it looks like. Uh, come on, baby. Give up. I don't want it to be the bigger seal that's inside. I don't know if I'm going to be able to tell just from looking at this. Uh, I'm going to be real gentle and kind of unbend my copper piece here a little. Run my finger around in there. and I was really hoping to like see a wound in that seal of some kind or another. It does kind of feel gritty in there. Can't imagine that I got grit and left it on and everything at the same time. But that's where I was going with this. So ARB air locker is going to be a whole nother thing. Thought maybe I could show you something real quick and simple. I'm going to have to hook up air to this, put it back together and test it. So I'm going to show you how to bench test an ARB air locker and see what's wrong with it. This is kind of a terrier differential apart. And uh, I'll put new axle seals in too, but axle seals pull one out, drive one in, pretty simple. But I'll do that when I put this back together. Thanks for tuning in. Listen to me ramble. Fast forward through a bunch of this and make it less painful on yourself. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.